Okay, hello everyone. It's good to be here at OpenStack Barcelona. Um, my name is Darren Sikanik. I'm a software engineer at Brocade. Um, I've been there for about two years. Uh, on my right, this is Kamurasan from NTT West. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been an engineer there for 20 years, and uh, he was the one who introduced OpenStack into NTT West's production network. Mm -hmm. And on my left, also from Brocade, is Nakano-san, who has been in the telecommunications industry for over 20 years. So this presentation is about um, how NTT West introduced OpenStack into their production environment and how they are going to expand on that um, and, what they will, and what, they, what they plan to do. So they're planning to take control of their physical multi-vendor network using Open Daylight and exposing it as a service through OpenStack. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, take it over to Kamurasan, who will begin the presentation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. This is just a disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> that was a proof of concept. Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Shigeaki Kimura from NTT West. <laughs> uh, in order to try out the linkage function of OpenStack and Open Daylight, we tried out. Uh, we tried to build an experimental environment as POC. The purpose of this POC is as follows: to set up the physical network devices, we utilize the southbound interface of Open Daylight. Present this capability northbound as an OpenStack service with OpenStack API and Horizon dashboard. I explained the background of our uh, trying out. Uh, we, NTT West, made a private IaaS environment using OpenStack, but only the pure OpenStack functionality, it did not fulfill the, our functional requirement for IPv6. So we did not use the load balancer and firewall functionality provided by the Neutron in the OpenStack environment. Instead, we use the physical network devices. Now, we can fulfill functional requirement but in exchange for this result, the tenant user has become impossible to use the self-service functionality. <coughs> yes. Our point of view, uh, this is a comparison of the VNF and the physical network devices. Oh. And at first, about the VNF, uh, this assumes a virtual network functions provided by the OpenStack Neutron. <coughs> there are various advantages to the VNF. On, uh, on the other hand, it's not yet satisfied for us. As mentioned before, we are restricted in functionality. And we also distract about performance. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it's about the uh, physical network devices. We can be fully satisfied with their functionality and performance because they are equipments that we, had, we have used up to now. However, uh, in order to take advantage of them in the IaaS environment using the OpenStack. We need to consider the following point. <clears throat> At first, all the, although the physical network devices already have some of the API, but it's hard to use because it's not optimized for use, to, uh, for use from the OpenStack. In addition, uh, their equipment have equi uh, excessive functions in order to provide as a service. They are too difficult for OpenStack tenant user, especially application developers. 
they should have been a little more abstract. And the user should be able to use them in the minimal configuration. <clears throat> the results of this POC, we confirm the following. At first, YAM modeled configuration standards of a physical firewall appliance. <clears throat> Second, Open Daylight application is able to manage the device programmatically in a NetConf-like manner using CLI and SSH. Third, mass tenancy was inherent to the device. Fourth, the device capability was exposed as an open stack service. Finally, uh, device configuration management possible through Horizon UI. As a result, the challenges that I mentioned before is almost uh, resolved by this POC. And this can provide functionality that we expected to use us. In other words, as if application developers are, if they are using the firewall as a service of Neutron, they can easily use Two complex firewall devices. Thank you, Kimura san. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I kind of stole the triple O acronym here and made it my own. Um, I, and just before I begin, I'd just like to start by thanking my colleague John Castro, who unfortunately couldn't be here. He was really looking forward to it. But uh, he, he developed much of the solution that we're going to go through today. Um, so, getting started. So. Traditional Neutron, uh, a, a traditional OpenStack deployment with Neutron is, is simple. And it works well if all you need to do is some basic DC switching, uh, maybe with VLAN or VXLAN. Um, it, it provides extensibility through the ML2 mechanism drivers, um, but it does have some caveats um, around scalability. So integrating ODL with OpenStack is, is a bit of an effort, um, but you do gain the benefits of HA and, and scalability. And you know, as you no longer need these OBS agents running on, on the compute nodes. Um, multiple open daylight projects are used to, as the implementation. And this is the benefit as they have their own interfaces which can be leveraged uh, if you're going to create your own networking solution. Um, but we, we, in this POC, we took ODL further and we leveraged, leveraged not only um, the many southbound interfaces, but also the architecture um, to control physical underlay network equipment and expose this capability through OpenSec. So that moving on and looking at some of the advantages of using Open Daylight or programming for Open Daylight is, is that it gives you um, topology discovery, which gives you a centralized view of the devices and their runtime configuration. Um, so you can, it's easier to perform management and, and troubleshooting. Um, scalability, so you no longer have to have those 1,000 OBS agents running on those uh, 1,000 nodes if that's how big uh, your compute node cluster is. Um, now you just need one logically um, clustered controller. Um, the, multiple, uh, the, the multiple southbound APIs mean that you can provide support for almost any device um, with, uh, through NetCom for OpenFlow, OVSDB, but in our case, as it was a legacy, a legacy device, we actually modeled the CLI configuration, and we created a southbound interface for that and a northbound one. Um, and so this, and the modular, the MD cell architecture, which makes up Open Daylight, means that you can swap out one implementation for another, use other, one project with another, and, and form a, your perfect network solution. Um, so looking at the PSC, what we did in the PSC from a high level, so what NTT West wanted was the ability for a tenant to come in and have a, a firewall either assigned to them or, or they can assign one to them. So they would have a, a, a network full of uh, these physical firewalls and you could assign one to a particular project in OpenStack. And uh, a tenant could go in and configure it using the Horizon UI. Um, so for example, configuring access lists as we'll see later. Then this would, um, when submitting the uh, the form in Horizon, this would translate to rest calls to the OpenStack service that we created. 
and which in turn would decompose this action into open daylight rest conf calls to these um, CLI plugin that we created. Um, so, and, and these calls would then be further translated down to SSH, and it would reliably push that configuration, those configuration standards, to the device uh, with rollback mechanisms and so on. Um, so this allowed, uh, this gives developers the tools um, to easily, that they're familiar with, like REST APIs, and, and we use the templating language, which we'll go in when we dive in. Um, of course, ideally, we, we would have liked if these physical devices supported something like NetConf or OVSDB or something similar. Um, but by creating this abstraction layer, we were able to, to utilize like, this programmatic approach um, to these legacy devices. So now diving into the solution, so it's kind of broken up into these two bits. So we had the bespoke OpenStack service and also the Open Daylight pro pro um, project that we created. So within OpenStack, uh, we, we, there's a big developer tool chain such as Cookie Cutter, which you can usually quickly create a new OpenStack service and also use Horizon and the built-in tools there to create the UI. And you can leverage things like Keystone so that you can um, know which tenant is logged in and so forth and uh, build restrictions around that. Um, so it, it was like a typical OpenStack service where you have the API, which does most of the heavy lifting, and also the Python client. Um, and we also created this modular kind of uh, structure so that each device, as you can see there by A, B, and C, um, would, would make its own uh, particular REST conf calls to open daylight to the CLI uh, REST interface, and which would be translated down into the CLI and SSH connection at the end. Uh, we modeled, in open daylight, we modeled the device, device's configuration using Yang, um, which allowed it, and Yang tools is one of the uh, tools in open daylight, which, allow, which, which passes these Yang models, and you get a it generates a REST conf interface, and it's self-documenting, as you'll see by the Swagger UI when we um, demo this next. Um, and we also use velocity templating and, and a custom, we created a custom DSL, which would translate um, this, these REST calls into that, those configuration stanzas. And then the CLI engine, of course, to push them reliably down. So non, what this actually gave NTT OS is not, in a, non-proficient uh, operators in, in, in a device. They don't need domain knowledge of the device to configure it and use it. Um, so going through the demo, so just jump across. So here we can see that the, um, the, the, the dashboard that we created, so the device that we modeled in this case was a Cisco ASA um, with the BSC dashboard here, and we're going to be adding an ASA firewall so this is a, a connection of one. So we're just logging in and just showing you that this is what we're going to um, mount in a netconf-like manner, but using this CLI uh, abstraction layer. So I'm just grabbing the interface now, the IP address. So what it will do is it'll SSH into it and mount it on into open daylight. So just type, give it an, uh, a name. Sydney Firewall with the IP address, the username, password, as you would. Um, if there was an enable password, you'd put that in the port that SSH is listening on and assign it to a project. So doing this mounts the device on open daylight. And now a user is able to go in there and configure different configuration stanzas within. So for example, uh, the first thing they can configure is, say, the um, interface. So here we, we go back and we can see that this interface, Gigabit and Ethernet 2, doesn't have any config. It's just got the standard config. So Going in and using the um, UI, we can go and edit that interface, add it, an, a name for it, add a IP address, add a net mask, and, uh, and a security level. Um, and then this will be pushed reliably down to the device using that abstracted layer. Uh, so we can see that it's been pushed down. So we've got a name, that security level, so most of the CRUD operations were supported, so we could edit that interface, and maybe we wanted to change that security level. So as you can see, it's, it's very easy now to configure a physical device. Um, there's no need for a, an engineer to go and log into the device and have to memorize all these commands. They can just use uh, the UI. Um, so here we're going to show uh, an access list. So there's no access list currently on this um, firewall. And so we can go configure them. So giving them a name. Um, also the ability to order them. 
So in this case, we're going to permit the Google DNS through. Um, saying TCP, you know, it, it kind of matches the CLI structure of the device, the UI and the API. So it's actually quite easy for these operators. So they go and submit that, and you can see that uh, the access list is there. They can delete it, and if we go back, switch back to the device, you can now see that that's been pushed down. Um, so we do very much the same thing again. So we add another device, uh, deny all. So just an ex explicit deny at the end. We add a remark, and we can see that that's successfully been pushed down again. Um, so a name that's easy to remember as well, and a remark for any other engineer that goes through. Um, you can also use the API of Open Daylight to query, the de um, to query Open Daylight and get the, the status of the device, the configuration. You can see that it's all in JSON, so you can integrate this further into any other system that you may have. Um, so in this example, we've just done giving all the access lists. And you can also do other uh, operations like push device configuration. So here we just add another one. Um, we change it so that the, des the destination host is that, and we push that through. And then you get the standard HTTP uh, response code. So we get a 200, OK, so it's being pushed through. And we can go see that by querying the device, the open air light again. And we can see, yes, that's in there. And uh, if we go in to the terminal, we can see on that device that it, in fact, has been pushed through. So as you can see, we had, um, we had modeled quite a bit of this device. So you, we, we were able to add access groups as well. Um, so one, uh, an access group for every device to deny all, set that access group, and we can see that that's been pushed through. And, and even con this is the REST API documentation generated by Open Daylight. So you get all this for free. It uses the Swagger UI. So you can actually, so any um, of your developers can come in and know how the API works. You can see that what they, they, they can see what they need to push through, what they're going to get back, and so on. In this case, we're saying, OK, give us the banners for this device, and let's go configure one. So we configure the message of the day, and we're going to say, hello, Barcelona, hello, OpenStack Barcelona. And we push that through. And um, you can see that in the RESCOM documentation, page again, we can hit try it out, and we, we can see that, that that's come through. And also, if we go through the device, we can see that that's pushed through to the device. That concludes the demo. Uh, switching back to the presentation. So with Neutron and Open Daylight, so they're complementary. So Neutron, they can coexist. So Neutron is, is great at doing the layer two DC switching. But if you really want to reach into the um, the underlay and program the physical devices using a multitude of different um, southbound APIs, you can now do that with the use of Open Daylight. And now I'm going to um, go back to Kamurasan, who's going to conclude the uh, presentation and talk about some of the futures. Okay. Thank you, Gary. <coughs> Uh, next, uh, we will talk about the future outlook and activities about the open stack and the NFV in our point of view. <clears throat> in the IaaS environment using open stack, we think that there is still a gap between the uh, ideal world and the reality one, <clears throat> especially about the expectation for the network function. The ideal server platform that we want to get is SDI. <clears throat> All of the network function is the virtual presence by software. In other words, it's, it's the NFV. The underlayer of the infrastructure in the uh, ideal SDI environment is composed of Co uh, commodity server equipment and simple function hardware switches. <clears throat> it's the environment that the SDN controller manages all of the control and can be used without considering differences in the individual devices. However, the environment in which we currently available is not reached yet actually up there. Still in short time, 
we need to continue to take advantage of dedicated equipment in the OpenStack underlayer environment. <clears throat> NTT West would like to make SDI capable overlay network fast. We, NTT West, will make SDI-based private server farm using OpenStack. There are two points in this challenge. How to involve hardware equipment into SDI environment seamlessly, and using multi-vendor equipment. <clears throat> in this slide, it's described that we want to achieve in our infrastructure. Uh, open stack tenants will be able to op operate the following physical network functions. Uh, at layer two switch, <coughs> uh, VLAN, creation, VLAN creation and uh, port assignment. At router, uh, virtual router creation and VLAN assignment routing configuration. At firewall, context uh, virtual firewall creation and uh, VLAN assignment. And firewall policy configuration, it is, uh, uh, we got it in this POC. <coughs> And uh, load balancer is same, same as, as firewall. Uh, that is to say, uh, it can be naturally realized in the virtual network of neutron. We want also to realize seamlessly uh, the same things as a neutron in the world of one underlay made up of physical network devices. At last, uh, we, NTT West, continues to utilize uh, OpenStack and is an active member of the community. By utilizing Open Daylight, it's possible to uh, extend the functionality of OpenStack. And uh, NTT West continues to explore other technologies as well. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kumaru-san. Uh, thank you. Any questions? Be gentle. It's my first time. Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you mean to extend, like the configuration standards that you can present up as an OpenStack service? No, but so, to be able to manage the firewalls, the ASA firewall that they purchased um, mm -hmm. through NTT, for example, to be able to go and modify the, the access lists and things like that themselves rather than using a GUI. I mean, as, as I showed, the, the API, so that can be integrated into any system. So you can write your own application that uses that API to configure that, as long as there's, you know, access to that open daylight controller, which is where that REST API lives. Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> yeah, uh, in, in, in a logical cluster. So uh, there is, there is, because it's an ACA, it uses the ACA framework. So there's some state distribution of like the configuration data store where, where when you push a REST request, that's kind of um, sharded onto the other data stores. And uh, so if one goes down, they have that uh, quorum that takes over. So another one becomes a master. Yeah. 
No, definitely not as a future, but you know, it's a stopgap um, for legacy devices because a lot of networking equipment, physical networking equipment, doesn't support netconf, and if it does, it doesn't work that well. And so it, it's a way to kind of, um, yeah, be able to programmatically access these legacy devices that an operator might have. As a result of that? Yeah, so yeah, so the CLI engine that was created, um, actually you can, you can do commands like to check if that was applied properly. So we, we, we do go and check if that configuration was applied properly, what, what should, and then we return that response code. Yes? Uh, what were we using? So that was a custom interface developed for this proof of concept. Um, so it's like a CLI southbound interface. So using the same kind of uh, Yang modeling and MD cell architecture that you would develop any other open daylight application. So we developed one of those, a southbound plugin basically. And it was a... Okay. So you created the Yang model? So we, yeah, we Yang modeled the device and we also write uh, this velocity template and we created some custom directives to make it like our own DSL. And yes, in the end, we are kind of using regex to pass that and kind of create that. So it, 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 is, it is a bit convoluted, but it does work. It gets the job done. Anyone else? Okay, well, uh, no one has any other questions. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the summit.